Hello everyone and welcome back to the Ryan Retro channel. In today's video, I'm going to guide you through Nintendo Switch emulation on your Android device. Whether you have an Android handheld like I have here or an Android phone. I'm going to make it really simple and easy to follow. So even if you don't have much experience in this, you should be able to follow along with me. So I will connect my capture card here so you can see nice and clearly. And let's go through all the steps you need to know to get Switch emulation up and running. To begin, we're going to need to download a few files. The first thing you're going to need is an emulator. That is the application that actually plays the games. There are a few choices available. I'll show you them on the screen now from the most recently updated to the one that hasn't been updated in a while. I would suggest going with Eden today because that is constantly being updated. And as of making this video, the latest update actually came out even today. So I would definitely recommend checking out Eden. I will include the links to all of these emulators in the description of the video. So if you follow me, we're now going to download Eden. This is the Eden releases page on GitHub. If you scroll down, you'll see builds we can use for Windows computers. But today we're talking about Android. So here you will see three different versions of Eden for Android. Android Standard, Android Optimized and Android Legacy. To keep things nice and simple, we are going to just download Android Standard. As it says, most users should use this. So let's go ahead and click on Android Standard. And that's going to start downloading the emulator file. And it will ask, do you want to install Eden? We are going to click Install. After a few seconds, it will be done. But we're not going to open it just yet because we need to get a few more files before it will work. So for now, let's hit Done. And now you need to download two more files, the Nintendo Switch firmware and the Nintendo Switch prod.keys file. Now, unfortunately, I cannot tell you where to get these from. And while I cannot tell you where to get these, if you just Google these terms, you're going to find them very easily. You will see there are all kinds of different versions you can download. I would recommend going with version 19.0.1 and make sure that your firmware and prod.keys are the same number. So once you've found your 19.0.1 firmware and your 19.0.1 prod.keys files, we're now ready to set up our emulator. Let's now open our emulator, Eden. It's going to now guide you through the installation process and we're going to need to allow a few permissions so that everything works as it should. So let's hit allow and then get started. It will ask you to give notification permissions. Let's grant that permission and hit allow again. Now we need to select that prod.keys file we just downloaded. So hit select keys and navigate to where you save that prod.keys file and click on it. You will see it say keys successfully installed and we now need to load that firmware file. As it says here, Eden currently requires version 19.0.1 or below. There are newer versions of firmware available, but right now they're not working well, which is why I suggested you download 19.0.1. So let's hit the select firmware button and let's select the firmware zip file. You will see a little progress bar fill up and it will tell you that it's successfully imported the firmware. The last thing we need to do is add our games. And once again, I cannot tell you where to download games. Please do not ask me where to illegally download games as I do not endorse or condone that whatsoever. Once again, if you found this video and you're following the guide, I assume you know how to use Google. So once you have your game files, click the add games button and navigate to where your games are and click use this folder. We're not selecting just one single game, we're selecting the whole folder so we can populate a list of all of our games. So find where your game files are and click use this folder. We now need to allow Eden to look at this folder, so let's hit allow. 
And we have one more option, which is deep scan. Deep scan means it won't just look in that one single folder you chose, but any other folders that might be inside that folder. If you have your games inside folders that are then nestled inside another folder, you're going to want to check deep scan. And if you're not sure whether to check deep scan or not, I would recommend checking it just so it will pick up all of your game files. Let's hit OK. And now you're done. We can hit continue and load into the main Eden interface. It's going to say that this is pre-alpha software and it might have some bugs. Let's just hit don't show again. And we are now ready to start seeing our games fill up in the game screen. By default, it's going to have this nice carousel screen where you can swipe through your games like this. But if you'd like to change that, you can come up to the little eye icon at the top of the screen and you can change it to a list. Or you can change it to a grid, which is usually the most popular view for quickly searching through your games. Now you are ready to start searching through your game list and launching games by just clicking on them. For example, let's choose Tennis in the Face. The game will load up, but you'll probably experience a few issues. First of all, there's a lot of clutter on the screen, which if you have a device like me with its own controls, you won't want to see all of these controls on the screen. Also, you might find that the buttons are not working. In my case, with the newest version of Eden, they actually do work right out of the box. But depending on what emulator and device you're using, your buttons might not be doing anything right now. So in order to fix that, we need to swipe in from the left side of the screen. That's how we access all of the in-game settings in Eden or any of the other Switch emulators. So let's swipe in from the left side of the screen. And we have a lot of choices here we can play around with. First of all, let's make sure our controller is working by hitting controls, player one, and then auto map a controller. You should now see your gamepad controls show up. Mine show up as an Xbox wireless controller, and by tapping that, it's going to automatically set up all of the controls for us. We can then click the back button a couple of times, click back into the middle of the screen, and if our controls were not working before, they would be now. So we have our controls set up. We can now turn the on-screen controls off. Of course, if you're using a phone with no gamepad, you're going to want to keep them and use them. But if you're using a device like me, we're going to want to turn all these distracting elements off, such as the gamepad controls and the text at the top of the screen telling you things like your frame rate and device information. So in order to do that, we're going to once again swipe from the left side of the screen and now come down to overlay options. Toggling off the top two options will turn off those pink texts at the top of the screen. So let's turn those off one by one. You'll now see that the text on the top of the screen is gone, but we still have the gamepad overlay. So if you would like to turn that off, once again, come back to the overlay options and just toggle this box that says show overlay. Now all of the overlays are gone, the gamepad is working fine, and we're ready to play some games. You are now already ready to go through your game list and start playing quite a few games. But what if the performance is not good or the game doesn't load? Well, we're going to get into some more advanced troubleshooting steps in a minute. But the first thing that you definitely need to do is install some drivers, especially if you're using a Snapdragon device. Turnip drivers greatly enhance performance in many games. So I'll leave a link in the description of the video for this turnip driver repository, where you can scroll through and download them. If you'd like to know what turnip driver works well for what game on what system, check out my website ryanretro.com where we have thousands of compatibility reports showing what works well for what game on what handheld. Then if you follow the link in the description, and for example, you saw that version 25.3.0 revision 5 works well for the game you want to play, you just need to scroll down to where it says assets and expand it by clicking on the triangle, download the auto.zip at the top of the list, and then back in your Nintendo Switch emulator, come up to the cogwheel at the top of the screen, click GPU driver manager, and then click install. Find that turnip driver you just downloaded and click on the zip file. Now it is available for use inside your Nintendo Switch emulator. 
But one thing I do want to show you is that the new version of Eden we are using, the one that I recommend, actually has a driver downloader built directly into this menu. So you don't need to go searching through the internet for drivers. You can simply hit the fetch button right here. And right here inside the app are all the drivers you might be looking for. There's a recommended driver for your device. In my case, it's the Mr. Purple T19. So if I wanted to download the recommended driver and try that out on my game, we can click Mr. Purple Turnip, scroll down to Mr. Purple T19, show downloads, and then just click the zip file to download it and apply it directly in the emulator. No need to go scrolling through Chrome, GitHub, or any other website. By playing around with these drivers, you can improve performances in games and get games to work that were not working before. Now that you have all of your games loaded up and a turnip driver installed, you are truly ready to jump into your game library and play a lot of playable titles. And if one game isn't working, the best way to fix that is by trying a different turnip driver. And the way to change a driver for one specific game is to hold your finger down on the game for a second to bring up that game's specific settings. And now when we choose GPU driver manager here, this will only change the driver for this game. So in this example, here is Littlewood. If I tap GPU driver manager, and I change this back to the system driver that came with my device, that is only changing it for this one game. All of the other games are going to be using the previously selected turnip driver. So just to quickly review that, if you choose the cogwheel at the top of the screen here and change this GPU driver manager, this is going to be your default driver for all of your games. And if you hold your finger down on a game and change this GPU driver, it's only going to change the driver for that one game. And while we're in the game's individual menu like this, this is also where we can install add-ons like modifications, DLC, or the most common, a game update. When you grab your game files, you might have an update file as well. So here is where you can install that update. You need to choose if it's an update or a DLC file, or if it's a modification or a cheat. In my case, I would like to install the update for this game. Hit OK. I'm then going to navigate to where my updates are and choose the game update here. You're going to see the progress bar as it installs. It will tell you it installed successfully. You can close this box. And now you see I have update 1.6.9.36 for Stardew Valley. And I can then toggle this update on or off using this box. So as long as the box is checked, we will have the latest updated version. And also, if you'd like to combine your games with the updates into one convenient package, check out this video I made showing you how to do that. The individual game screen like this is also where we will troubleshoot any problems with games. So let's now get to the troubleshooting section. If you followed the guide up till this point, you should have a pretty solid Switch experience set up right now, with a lot of games working and great potential. But there may be some problems. So let's go through a few common issues and a few common solutions. What if the game doesn't show in the list? If your game's not showing up in this list, first of all, check what file it is. Nintendo Switch games should be .nsp or .xci files. If your game is still in its zip file, it might not appear here. Also, if your game is in a folder nested inside another folder and you didn't check the deep scan button, that may also be a problem too. If you're seeing no games whatsoever here, you might have selected the wrong folder. Thankfully, in Eden, there is a big folder button right at the bottom of the game page. You can click this and you can choose your folder again. So just navigate to where your games definitely are Check that they are in here and then tap use this folder, allow Eden to see the folder and then your games should be appearing. If you don't see just one or two games appearing and it's definitely the right file type, it might be a new game and you might need a newer firmware. If you're using older firmware like firmware 17 for example and the game is quite new, it just might not be compatible with that old firmware. So once again I suggest getting firmware and prod.keys 19.0 Point one. What if a game doesn't open or opens for a few seconds and crashes again? This has happened to me quite a lot over the months and the main thing that fixes this is installing the game update. 
Check if you have an update file, and if you don't have an update file, try to find one, update the game to the latest version, and that should fix this problem. You may also want to try different drivers as well. A game's performance is really bad. If a game's performance is really bad, the first thing you're going to want to do is try different drivers. There is no one size fits all when it comes to drivers and devices and games. You're going to need to play around with them. And in Eden, when you come to the Fetch section, I can also recommend the new Mr. Purple drivers as well. T21, T20 and T19 have all been working very well for me across a multitude of devices. So I can also recommend tinkering with those. And once again, check RyanRetro.com to see what others have got working well, so you can just copy them. What if a game has bugs and glitches? Once again, try to update the game, try a different driver, and some games require specific settings. For example, A Link to the Past needs a special mod to stop this light flickering. So I'd recommend checking out what other people are doing and joining discussion boards like my Discord where you can ask for help. We can all help each other to get these games working well. There are also some games that just simply will not work on the device you have. The Snapdragon Elite is notoriously not working well with many games right now. Non-Snapdragon devices are also having a hard time because they don't have access to turnip drivers. And newer games like EA Sports FC 25 until today would not launch at all on any Android device. But the changelog for the newest version of Eden says it may finally be possible. So in some situations, we might also need to play a bit of a waiting game. But if you follow this guide and do everything I did, you should be in a really good position to play Nintendo Switch games on your Android device. Just remember, I don't endorse piracy in any way, and please buy the games you're going to use and obtain them legally. I really hope this video was helpful. If it was, please give me a like and subscribe if you didn't already. I'm very close to 20,000 subscribers and hitting that would make me very happy. If you'd like to support me further, please also consider joining my Patreon or Ko-fi to help with my server costs for my website and to help support me making these guides for everybody. And if you'd like to buy the Retroid Pocket 5 I showed in this video, the Odin 2 Portal or any of my other devices, you can also check out my affiliate links in the description to the official websites of those products, which once again helps me out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again in the next video.